Before we start, I think that it is, it, it's necessary to have a, min, a moment of silence to reflect on the terrible and shameful war in Ukraine. Thank you. Over to you, Frank. Et moi, je suis Irène de Bruxelles. <laughs> One of the founders of the German Green Party, je suis un des fondateurs du Parti des Verts allemands et le premier député ici au Parlement européen. La partie politique de la biographie des Franck, je vais la sauter parce que je n'ai pas du tout la partie politique de ma vie. Explain who you are in the two languages. Oh, OK. Moi, je suis donc Irene Kamanzi et j'ai travaillé dans le secteur des énergies renouvelables et je suis une lauréate de l'année dernière. Franck est un des membres des partis fondateurs de, euh, fondateur des partis euh, verts euh, allemands et euh, un ex-membre du Parlement européen. And we have thought it would be nice to do it like Eurovision, hommes et femmes, French and English. On a pensé que c'était une bonne idée de faire ça en double, c'est-à-dire en français et en anglais, et un homme et une femme. Oui. <laughs> une femme et un homme. <laughs> you see, it's difficult. <laughs> um, because of the events east of Brussels, we will start now with a speech from Ukraine. À cause de la situation euh, que nous connaissons actuellement des guerres euh, qui frappent l'Ukraine, nous allons commencer par un, 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 un court message euh, de la part des de représentants de l'Ukraine. And we are here have a lot of no, we have a certain number of Ukrainians here in Brussels. Il y a euh, beaucoup de Ukrainiens en Belgique. And we have chosen Katarina to speak to us. important the job we are doing and I think that unfortunately I cannot be very festive and celebratory here because in my country is a full-scale war started by Russia and every minute people are fighting for their lives my mother my eight years old sister is sitting in the basement because of challenge so I want to say that I see one Think in common between you and between people of Ukraine and women of Ukraine. And that is that we are all believe that it's possible to achieve very big things even if people are not supporting, even if everybody around says it's impossible. Because this is what we see now, this is what is going on. Ukraine is resisting a second army in the world, Russia. And this is because we have a dream, this is because we believe, and this is because we, we fight. I know that women of Ukraine now take guns 
and they went on streets to protect their children and their relatives and families. Other women, they are in the hospitals, in fabrics, they're working to help our army. And other women, they're just with their bare hands stopping tanks. They're going on streets and they're manifesting. They are taking their flags and they are singing the hymn of Ukraine. And this reminds me of what you are doing in your countries. You are speaking against maybe social opinion. You are doing everything to support your dream and to support things you believe in and to make them real. So me, I'm coming from a very small city, Kremenchuk, and when I was younger, everybody says to me that it's not possible to, to, to study in the nice university to get a scholarship, but I did it. I studied in Oxford and in Germany, in Paso, and in Kiev, of course. And then in my second grade, I went to work in the Verkhovna Rada in the parliament of Ukraine to make some changes because it was a time of revolution of dignity in 2014. And that's a real time when the war started, not now. That was in 2014. And many people, even my surrounding, even a part of my family said that you are young, you do not need to fight on this, it's not possible. It's simply, it's uh, corrupted, it's a very old system and it's not possible to change anything, just give up and go somewhere to Europe and find a nice job and earn money. But we fight and I see the results uh, now. I see that Ukraine now is much more stronger than it was even in 2014. Then everybody said to me that it's not possible to work in the European Parliament because Ukraine is not the part of the European Union and it's not possible to influence things uh, in Ukraine from here, from Brussels. But I don't believe it and what we do now, we, we fight. Yesterday we had the resolution in the European Parliament and I think it's a very successful resolution. And me and my colleagues in the European Parliament fight for each word of this resolution, and we will fight further for everything, you know, to support Ukraine in these times. And of course, when people asked me when I was, uh, when I was participating in an election in Ukraine, because I am a member of a city council in my city, they said to me, again, give up, do not come back to Ukraine, do not participate in these elections, because you are young, nobody will hear to you, nobody will listen to your arguments, and it's all corrupted anyways. But this is not why we, you know, Ukrainians fight. We fight for our values. We are not listening to people who are, you know, supporting Russian propaganda or who are saying that you have, Ukraine is not a real nation. We are real. And, and people in Ukraine are real and women in Ukraine are real and what they're doing now, it's real. So I want to take this opportunity to say that what you are doing in your countries, it's real and it's a real job. And I want to say thank you on behalf also of Ukrainians for your job, for what you're doing for the world community. Because that's how we act step by step with, with the very little things and very little actions what we do on our personal level. On my level, on, on level of, of women in Ukraine, on your level, it's all important because together, I think what we do, we build a world, a democracy. Not, not kind of Kremlin world, not a communist regime, we're building a democracy. So I think every action is important, and I want to congratulate you with all your achievements, with everything you achieved so far, and I want very much from the bottom of my heart to wish you further achievements and to strength and courage in, and faith in what you're doing to, you know, to really implement all your plans, because we all have common dream and common goal for democracy. Slava Ukraini. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you, Katerina, for your moving speech. Merci, Katerina, pour uh, ce message très, très émouvant. Et maintenant, and now we will go to Hessen. We will listen to the welcome speech of the Staatssekretär, Secretary of State, Uwe Becker. On va écouter le discours de Monsieur Uwe, s'il vous plaît. Dear Vice President of the European Parliament, Mrs. Nicola Beer, dear Mr. Bahiri, Mr. Schwalba Hoth,
And of course, the uh, award winners, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, at this very special beginning also, thank you, Mrs. Muzienko, for your impressing words at the beginning of today's ceremony. When this event was planned, when the agenda of today's event was set up, nobody thought that we would see a war again on the grounds of Europe. And so the world has changed. Our European continent is different today than it was a week ago. And everything I could have said about this situation was said in those words that we have listened to when Mrs. Muzienko was speaking as a Ukrainian woman, speaking out for the people of this country. And so also at the beginning of today's words, I welcome you, of course, officially in the name of the state government of Hessen, in the name of our Prime Minister Volker Bouffier, and of course of our Minister for Federal and European Affairs, Mrs. Putrich. And we're happy to host this very special event here in the most western part of the state of Hessen, here in our representation. But before I come to those issues and to those aspects that I want to speak is uh, that again, I think we have to point out one thing looking at the situation in Ukraine. I very often hear in the news the Ukrainian conflict or the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. To my mind, it is not a Ukrainian conflict or a Ukrainian-Russian conflict. It's a terrible war that Russia leads against an independent democratic state, a European state at the front borders of the European Union. And for that reason, I think we should all be clear at this day to stand on the side of the people of Ukraine. And you said it's Slava Ukraini. And there, of course, too, we see women taking their children by their hand on a dramatic way to save the lives of their family. You were speaking about your mother, your family, having to hide. Others have to hide in shelters, in subway station and elsewhere in this country, and nobody knows what the next day will bring. And so our thoughts at this very special event are, of course, with the women who now, in part, are fighting for the freedom of their country, who are saving their children and families, and who are also part of the family that we are speaking about today. I welcome you to the European International Women's Leadership Award Ceremony for 2021, and it's really something special that we do it on the one side live here, partly in person and over our electronic gateways that we have been used to use over the past two years. But it's good that we see, at least in this field, a little light shining at the horizon, that we come back and meet in person. As every year, we will once again celebrate International Women's Day on March 8. This day marks a struggle against prejudice and for equal rights. It was established to remind us of the long fight for gender equality, the campaign for women's votes, improvement of living conditions, and the emancipation of female workers. The European International Women's Leadership Award reflects the history of this long but crucial struggle. The award honors outstanding personal achievement involving tremendous initiative, hard work, and in many cases, real courage. Sadly, we also need to remember more recent tragic developments. For example, those in Afghanistan too, women who have fought for democracy, education, and women's rights, and have achieved great things, and have had their rights and opportunities taken away 
suffer persecution and fear for their lives. And this does not only happen in Afghanistan, but in too many parts of our world. This is why I'm particularly delighted that today's award will honor women in leadership with extraordinary career stories, women who influence the development of societies, who promote integration, diversity, and justice. Hessen supports the goal and the idea behind this award. The idea of recognizing women, women who have made their mark in a male-dominated world, women who have escaped the long shadow of tradition that restricts women's rights, and women who campaign for change. The award winners, you can give women the strengths they need to take this giant step. For you are successful role models for women worldwide and can improve their lives as a result. Congratulations to all of the award winners. We are deeply grateful for your commitment. And as I said on this very special occasion and on this very special day, it is more time. And not only in parts of the world away from us, but also here in the city, in the EU, where there's still much more to be achieved. Thank you very much, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Uwe Becker, for your speech very much on the topic. Thank you, Mr. Uwe Becker, for this speech and for everything you've said. Savez-vous qui il était avant? He was the mayor of Frankfurt, among others responsible for the money of Frankfurt. Il était le maire de Frankfurt et était responsable des finances au niveau de la de mairie. Thank you that you are here with us today. Merci pour votre présence aujourd'hui. And now we are coming to a special person. On arrive à une personne spéciale. Uwe Becker was special as well. <laughs> Monsieur Becker était spécial aussi. <laughs> Tout le monde sera spécial au fur et à mesure. <laughs> It is Radwan Bashiri. Radwan Bashiri. He alone, not me, not Björn Hulten, had an incredible idea. Il a eu cette idée extraordinaire tout seul. Pas avec Franck ou Björn. Pas avec Franck, pas avec Björn ou quelqu'un d'autre. Pour créer cette structure. Pour non, to create this structure. Pour créer la structure uh, qui est aujourd'hui uh, présentée. And therefore, he will introduce now what it is. Il va faire la présentation maintenant de quoi il s'agit. Applause for Radouane Bachiri. Merci Bachiri. <laughs> Madam Vice President of the European Parliament, Mr. Secretary of State for European Affairs of the State of Hessen, dear Director of the Hessen Office, ladies and gentlemen, the forum celebrates women's leadership, women from all over the world who inspire and bring about lasting change in their community, who are able to bring about transformative change, whether in the public domain, political, educational, entrepreneurship, or any other field. As the world continues to face pressing challenges such as climate change, conflicts, wars, and pandemics, as well as widening inequalities, the consolidation of inclusive and diverse feminist leadership is essential for sustainable development on a planetary scale. As you know, the effective participation of women and equal opportunities in leadership are recognized globally as essential factors in achieving the goals of sustainable and economic development of nations and peoples. 
its challenges also directly and specifically impact women. Although if women are the first victims, they are also the first carriers of solutions. To overcome these crises, we absolutely must go through a sustainable and inclusive economic and societal model. This fourth edition, which takes place within the representation of the State of Hessen to the European Union, is a key annual meeting which highlights women from all over the world presenting <coughs> and sharing their experiences and making the update on needs and progress in terms of equality. Our society is still much steeped in a patriarchal culture. Leadership, of course, has no gender. It is neither feminine nor masculine, and rather it has qualities and values that vary between women and men. The responsibilities entrusted to women are increasing, and we must encourage and promote the work of women, particularly in fields that are still very masculine. Our prize winners here present, whom I thank for having made the trip, and all the women leaders present at this for forum, are there to spread a message of hope, to encourage women to move towards more leadership. On this occasion, and on behalf of the Forum's organizing committee, Björn Hulten and Frank Schwalbachot, I would like to thank the institution of the European Parliament for its commitment to defending the principles of democracy and the values of equity. I thank the Vice President of the European Parliament, Mrs. Nicola Baer, for her commitment. I thank the Secretary of State for European Affairs of the State of Hessen, Uwe Becker. A big thank to you also, Director um, Mr. Frederik von Heusiger and his team for having facilitated the success of this forum as well as the major contribution to the organization of the forum. I would like to thank all the European institutions that have helped us organizing this meeting, the Belgian institutions and the authorities who have supported this project and who have supported us in organizing it. I also thank all the international organizations that support the forum and our women's leadership projects. I extend my congratulations to the seven award winners whose exceptional journey forces for admiration and deserves to be celebrated in order to encourage all women around the world to pursue their legitimate dreams and aspirations. My respectful greetings go to all our guests and participants, some of whom have made really long journeys. The International Forum for Women's Leadership is dedicated to all women MPs, business leaders, NGO representatives, journalists, scientists, researchers, women lawyers from the agricultural world and all women leaders in their respective areas. It aims to encourage female leadership on a global scale. Thank you again to all the participants who honored us with their presence and those who are many to follow us online. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Radouan. Merci, merci à Radouan pour ce discours. And now we are coming to the centerpiece of this evening. Nous arrivons à la pièce maîtresse de cet événement. And we will always start with someone who will introduce the laureate. On commence toujours par une personne qui représente la lauréate. Et après, Then. and afterwards, Pardon. And afterwards, the Vice President of the European Parliament will give the award. Après les, les, la présentation, uh, la Vice President du Parlement va donner le prix. And then the laureate will stand here and speak. Et la lauréate va se mettre là et va faire son discours. Pour ça, Janine Lambrecht. Janine Lambrecht, madame. She has not won the award. <laughs> <but> <laughs> Ce n'est pas elle qui reçoit le prix, elle va présenter la lauréate. Oui. <laughs> Mesdames, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, it is with joy that I will introduce you Chantal Hemerex. She was born in Kivu. She completed her primary education in Kinshasa and her secondary and higher education in Brussels. 
She lived in Paris, then London, before returning to Belgium. As she was back in Brussels, she settled in the Matongue district in Ixel, a district that takes its name from its famous eponym in Kinshasa. Chantal organized various activities there that highlight Congolese culture, in particular through events such as Matongar, to discover the cultural aspect of the Matongue district. For five months, more than 50 artists exhibited their work in shop windows. The theme was water, in order to raise awareness about water issues. Chantal organized also Congo Strip, a <coughs> traveling exhibition. It was a presentation of the Congolese comic strip with particular attention to the young generation. The exhibition ended with a study day, the ambition being to allow an exchange between Congolese cartoonists and screenwriters, editors, critics, and journalists. Chantal also organized a traveling exhibition around Paul Panda Fanana. It was an exceptional Congolese person, a Pan-Africanist, a committed intellectual and man of culture. This exhibition was the result of several years of research. It was an educational and civic approach. It was also hosted by the Embassy of the Democratic Republic of Congo in Brussels, which renamed its library after this personality. Chantal also published Matongazen. It was a bi-monthly magazine printed in 10,000 copies that offered for five years a space for expression to the inhabitants of the Matonge district. And through its various headings, we had all the different faces of this multicultural district. Chantal organized the exhibition 20 faces of Matonge, showing portrait of personality from the neighborhood. In addition, she organized exchanges between 20 schools in Brussels and schools in Kinshasa. Again, showing how much she worried or she cared about young people and about creativity. So after all those trips, she decided to meet several artists. Today, Chantal has returned to painting. She signs under the name of Chanterax and exhibits in various European cities. Awarded at the end of 2021 in the painting category, at the International Biennale of Arts to the Academia Italia in Arte nel Mondo. And it is all this force of African expressiveness, the dazzling light of an equatorial sun that we find in her way of painting. Frank and lively colors brutal and daring constructs between cold and warm colors. This is how Chantal is showing her strength and her courage and her pleasure for living. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Thank you very much, Janine. Merci, Janine. Those of you who have studied at the VUB University certainly know her. 
pour euh, ceux qui ont fait l'université VUB, de connaître madame. Because she was a professor for arts. Elle a été Thank professeure d'art à la Allez. VUB. <rire> Merci beaucoup. <rire> And I'm very grateful that Nicolas Beer, Vice President of the European Parliament, is here to hand now over the award to Chantal Ering. Madam Vice President of the European Parliament, Mr. Secretary of State, members of the Forum, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start by thanking our host, the representation of the start State of Hessen to the European Union and its team who worked for successfully organize this wonderful event, especially Bjorn, Frank and Hadwan. I am very proud and honored to be part of the women chosen by the International Forum of Women's Leadership. This award means a lot to me. It confirms that we, award-winning women, must lead the way in fighting against gender inequality. At a certain moment of my life, I have decided to bring my personal contribution to challenge male-dominated areas. Sorry, the man. To get this goal, I turn towards first supporting girls' education and secondly, organizing historical and cultural events that Janine explained. Girls' education. There is a very famous sentence from Nelson Mandela that says, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. In the period of 2008 and during years, I had organized exchanges of letters and videos between school children from 20 schools in Brussels and Kinshasa. Those exchanges have enabled young school children here in Belgium to be aware of the gender imbalances in the classrooms in Africa. There were some great results following those exchanges. Brussels school children finance girls' schools' fees in Congo. I maintain that every girl, no matter where she lives, no matter what her lifestyle, has a right to learn. Women across culture. It is in history and culture that we see the difficult path and the place of women. The way history is written, it almost seems there were no women involved in any major developments. That is not the case. Throughout history, women have been accomplishing, discovering and innovating. Yet, their achievements have been largely left out of the historical narrative. When women's accomplishments are not documented, published or promoted, it leads to a lack of role models for girls and women to emulate. What is important is that women face up to the reality of their history and their culture and of their present situation. In my project, Congo Strip, presentation of the Congolese comic strip, the public could see that the few girls who dared to embark in the comic strip environment were not taken seriously by their families and rejected by male critics. A few years ago, I returned to my first love, painting. My artist's name is Chanterax. I want to thank Janine Lambrecht for her help and guidance in my new artist orientation. It was while doing research for my paintings that I was able to see that there had always been an exclusion of women from the artistic world and their low status in exhibition venues. Gender inequalities. Being an artist for a woman was accepted as a hobby, not a profession. Indeed, social pressures could be so great that many women artists felt the need to choose between a career and marriage. 
In general, the most successful female artists of the 19th century, such as Rosa Bonheur and the Americans Mary Cassatt and Cecilia Beau, remain unmarried. Female artists were not allowed to study nudity. nudity. This explains why female painters devoted themselves more to a still lives and landscapes. Mythological, mythological, historical scenes and nudity were reserved exclusively for men, as well the life drawing classes, an essential part of academic studies, were denied to women in both public and private institutions, as they were considered inappropriate and even dangerous for women. This lack of freedom greatly limited what women artists could paint. Well-known lyrics, and you can see them everywhere. There are no great women artists because women are incapable of greatness. The road to recognition for women artists was and remains with a lot of obstacles. It is therefore important to move towards an artistic world where gender distinctions are diminishing and where women and men have the same creative freedoms. We are no longer men or women, we are artists. Women may have to work twice or three times as hard as men to achieve the same recognition. But if this is the case, if this is what it takes for us to be successful, then we'll work that hard. We are capable of it. Dear women, you may agree with me that while we've made some important strides, our work is far from finished. And that is why we have to keep on working towards a better day for women and girls. So thank you all for your commitment and your passion. Let me just finish with those words of Serena Williams that I love. The success of every woman should be the inspiration to another. We should raise each other up. Thank you for your attention. Merci. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Chantal. Merci, Merci Chantal. Beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Now we are coming to the next laureate. Now, maintenant on passe à la deuxième lauréate. She will be described by Zhu Shen. Elle a été découverte par Zhu Shen. And Zhu is originally from China. Ah, elle va, elle va être présentée par Zhu uh, Shen. And normally she is from China. Elle est de la Chine. And she is the only person from China I've met who did the following. Oh, c'est la, la seule personne de Chine que j'ai rencontrée qui, qui, fait a fait ce fait, qui, a, qui, a fait, qui a fait la suivante. <laughs> When she decided to live in Europe, she did the following. Quand elle a décidé de venir en Europe, elle a fait ceci. Elle n'est pas arrivée avec l'avion. Elle n'est pas arrivée en avion. Non, pas en bicyclette, non. <laughs> Not with, with a bike, non. Pas en bicyclette non plus. She took the train from the whole of train. Siberia. Elle est arrivée en train à travers la Sibérie. And I asked her, why did you do it? Et je lui ai posé la question, pourquoi avez-vous fait ça? She said, I wanted to approach myself to Europe with an adequate speed. Oh. Elle, a, elle a dit qu'elle voulait s'approcher de l'Europe avec une vitesse raisonnable. Oui, raisonnable. raisonnable. <laughs> And not to jump from one place to another. Avec douceur, et pas sauter d'un point à un autre. And now it is to Jue to tell us who will be the next laureate. Jue va nous présenter la prochaine laureate. Jue. Thank you, Frank. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. With all my honor and respect, please allow me to introduce you this incredible lady, Tao Kirby. Born in Brussels as the doctor of political refugee from Vietnam. She went to school where she learned that being of different origin could even create aggression from Catholic educated kids and teachers. This mistreatment shifted the energy to this shine girl to sports, swimming, dancing, music, piano and singing, activism, setting up 
a refugee platform, becoming excellent and a perfectionist in her law studies. To enter into a well-recognized law firm, she knew that international experience could be an obligation. So she moved to London to perfect her English language ski and to work for a law firm specialized in criminal cases. Followed by a move to Shanghai, where she worked in law firm specializing in business law and where she trained as well her colleague in EU law. To add institutional experience, she returned to Brussels for an EU Commission internship in the DG Economic and Finance and accepted to work afterwards for UN Tribunal in Phnom Penh to try the Khmer Rouge leader in the Cambodia genocide. With that experience, she finally settled in Brussels and joined one of the leading law firms where she specialized in mergers and questions. All those carry-oriented efforts lead a burnout and the rethinking of her aim and life. She therefore joined the human rights NGO where she served as an internationally accredited election observer and testified at UN Human Rights Council in Geneva on certain human rights violations in Vietnam. To spread her newly developed insights in society, she educated herself in video production. Some of her videos and on refugee and health were shown on TV and in cinema as well. She decided finally to follow the dream of her childhood, working as a fashion model. The contact with the agencies ended with uh, equivocal refusals. Neither seen or tall, nor young and uh, addition Asian. A fashion model she met by accident guided her to, into the right direction. Neglect the agencies, stay determined and disregard the mainstream perception of beauty. So she started to train in sports. She became excellent in running and boxing <laughs> and became aware that personal development and the constant learning could enable her to shape her future in an entrepreneurial mindset. As a result, she managed to increase her confidence and a strong portfolio with renowned photographers. And it's worked. Top end labels accepted her special profile. She was invited on Belgium and on US TV by radios and schools to speak out about her career change to inspire young and the less young generations to believe in themselves and fight for their dreams. The most read women's French-speaking Belgian magazine reported about this a typical transition and she received the award from one of the best French-speaking coaches in between, she found time to marry and uh, become a mother. And she is nationally present as a video producer and internationally as a fashion model for, among others, L'Oreal, Bulgari, Nespresso, the fashion magazine Elle, and uh, Marie Claire. Wherever she's asked, she's spreading her messages. With education, nothing is impossible. Fashion can be an ode to female self-confidence. Stay respectful while being determined.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Merci, Joey. And now we are coming to Tao Kilbe. Tao Kilbe. Oh, pardon, pardon. Look. Wow. Madam the Vice President of the European Parliament, Mr. President of the European International Women Leadership Award 2022, members of the forum, ladies and gentlemen, I am so honored to be here to receive the European International Women Leadership Award. I will not start talking about my success. I would rather focus on my failure, but don't worry, there is a happy ending. When I was a kid, insults such as sal xing tok, ugly Chinese skeleton, were my daily routine as a shy and insignificant girl at school. While some kids consider me as an object they could throw around, hit, and spit on, other kids would grab my breast and my ass to check if I have some. But fortunately, things change. And after a lot of effort and resilience, the daughter of the Vietnamese refugees became a successful lawyer traveling around the world. Then I thought I was happy, but I was not. One day, while working at my desk, I was thinking about the dream that I had when I was a little girl. The girl who paint and glued to the wall of her room perfume campaigns in awe of those strong and beautiful feminine figures. So I applied for a modeling online job. And guess what? I was chosen. And during the shooting, it was a revelation. I was in my own universe, and in that moment, being part of a creative process made complete sense to me. Apparently, I did a great job, and I was so happy. But back at my office desk, facing my legal cases, I felt empty. I felt a conflict of value inside of me. I realized that I didn't want to work anymore, and I didn't like my job anymore, and I wanted to be a model. But of course, I was not, a, I was not taken seriously. So what happened next? I suffered a burnout. I could barely speak nor read a document. I spent several weeks at the hospital. I thought I'd gone crazy. And there, in that moment, I actually realized that my whole life, I was seeking for everyone's approval. But it turns out that my burnout was the best thing that could happen in my life. I lived the most creative period. I created several raising awareness campaigns for refugees and education, being a dancer, an actress, and eventually living my childhood dream, being a model. Yes, art saved me and it helped me to gain confidence. It was difficult to explain to my refugee's parents that from a lawyer, I would turn into an artist at the age of 30. It was not an easy transformation. I struggled, I worked so hard, 
facing multiple mockeries and rejection, researching artists, creating my own network from scratch, working on my communication, going on to events, figuring out the necessary understanding of the market by all myself, shaping my body with a coach. Yes, it's a real job. As a lawyer, I fought for justice for others. And now I fight for my freedom to be my true self, hopefully inspire the others to do the same along the way. So I am here today to promote the idea that no matter where you come from, no matter all what you have been through, there is always hope to be the person you want to become. I want to dedicate this award to my husband, who is here, Tanguy, to my mom, to my daughter, to my beloved family, my friend who supports me, and to each person who wants to rewrite the script they were born into. Find out who you are and make the best of your life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joey, for your moving speech. Thank you, Joey, for this discourse very, very moving. We are now moving to Africa. On bouge en Afrique maintenant. <laughs> the introduction will be done by Hafsad Abiola. L'introduction sera faite par Madame Abiola. There are three things which you have to know about her. Trois choses à savoir sur Madame Abiola. Two years ago, she was laureate of this prize. Deux ans euh, passés, elle a été lauréate de ce prix. Deuxième point, c'est un secret. The second point is a secret. When I meet someone from Nigeria and this person is not really attentive to me. Quand je rencontre euh, quelqu'un de, de, du Nigeria et cette personne n'est pas assez, euh, ouvert, assez ouvert. I say I'm a friend of Hafsa Abiola. <laughs> et je dis je suis l'ami de Hafsa Abiola. Oh, un des amis. <laughs> un des amis de Hafsa Abiola. And say wow. Et directement la personne se dit wow. Because it's not because she was the daughter of the first democratically elected president. C'est pas parce que c'était la fille du premier président élu démocratiquement du Nigeria. But because through her engagement she's famous. Parce que à travers ses engagements elle est incroyable. Because her theory is focus on women and focus on the young generation. Sa théorie est Concentrez-vous sur les femmes, concentrez-vous sur les jeunes. And therefore, she became director of a Paris-based organization. Et elle est devenue directrice d'une un, association de basée à Paris. Basée à Paris, pardon. Which is called Women in Africa. Appelée Femmes en Afrique. And therefore, Hafsa voilà. Abdullah, please. <laughs> <laughs> The truth, the truth is that um, Frank is one of my very best friends. So not just one of my friends, but really a friend of over 25 years, I think, now, Frank. It's just truly incredible when we met at the Gorbachev event in San Francisco, and I'm so proud to watch how you've continued to live a life of value and passion. <laughs> You know why? Because I came to this event, everyone stood there to sign. But one person was kneeing and signing. Je pensais que c'est une personne. Mais this is really an extraordinary person. Je pensais que c'était une personne extraordinaire. And this is why. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is may, la raison. <laughs> um, may I, for the moment, um, acknowledge the presence of the Vice President of the European Parliament. Also acknowledge our host, the Director of the Hess Representative Office. And also, Our Excellency, Madam Ambassador of um, Democratic Republic of Congo. 
to me, this moment is what I live for because we acknowledge an extraordinary African woman. It is my pleasure to present Marie Dolores Mabuela. Marie Dolores Mabuela was born in Kinshasa. Her family moved to Europe when she was still a baby. And so she grew up in Brussels and dreamed of a future where she could help other people, either as a doctor or as a police officer. She learned to play the violin and the flute, the flute and spent much time on horseback riding and doing yoga. Due to private problems, she had to interrupt her psychology studies and instead did an internship at the European Parliament. These accumulation of diverse experiences guided her to take one of the paths to which she had aspired as a child. She applied to the Brussels Police Department. She was the very first female officer from Sub-Saharan Africa. Following her acceptance, she discovered that perhaps because of her origins, she was confronted with racism. However, did this, this did not stop her from climbing the hierarchy. Within the first year of her service, she was promoted to police inspector, and within seven years, she was promoted to team leader. Some women may have been content with this, but not Marie Dolores. She was convinced that they, the police had a positive role to play, but she was concerned by the internal deficiencies within the system, and therefore decided to approach a profession from an academic angle, returning to the university to study criminology. Being a, a full-time police officer and a single mother, you can imagine how challenging our studies were. Nevertheless, she excelled, and she was able to graduate with a master's degree and was promoted to a position where she coordinated 500 colleagues to deal with the police presence at major sporting events and at the European Union and NATO summits. Her performance qualified her for a new role, this time as the coordinator of only some 140 colleagues protecting Belgium's very important personalities, VIPs, and foreign guests in the capital of Europe. Our experiences revealed to her yet another shortcoming. Not only was criminology not enough, but she needed to understand the nuance of political interpretation. And so she again returned to university and enrolled for a second master's degree in political science at ULB University, where she was easily the oldest student in the class, well a full generation above, um, older than all her classmates. But this did not stop her from demonstrating her usual excellence. And she again graduated last summer with a ceremony that was held at the Grand Place. Our motivation all these years was to show her daughter, who is with us tonight. I wonder if you could stand. Um, Est-ce que vous pouvez uh, debut? Can, can you stand up? We, oui. our daughter is with us tonight, <laughs> and she wanted, she wanted to show her daughter. And she wanted to show all the women of Sub-Saharan Africa, which number only maybe uh, 500 million women, that if you live by a set of values and a determined mind, a drive, a drive for excellence, you can succeed, even in a structure dominated by men. Now, Offers are pouring in for Marie Dolores from all over the world, from the world of international police agencies. And she's faced with a new choice, 
whether to continue to serve Belgium or whether to broaden our horizons. And so I want to say to Marie Dolores Mabuela that you're an African woman, an African woman an Africa where we were the first people in the world. We were the world's first people. And, you know, I think, my humble opinion, is that it is good for you to do, offer your service to Belgium, but you owe the world your service, really, not just Belgium. So I hope that you continue to broaden your horizons and really, who knows, maybe the international, Interpol or some other global agency Will, one day will have you take the leadership position. It's your dream. You can do so much. And we, all of us women in Africa, we are so proud of you. And we continue to urge you on. Thank you. Uh, Hafsa, that is not working like that. <laughs> Some match, but come, sir. No. There are secrets in this world which you shouldn't tell. <laughs> Il y a des secrets qu'il ne faut pas dire. There are so many international bodies who have asked her to come to them. Il y a des institutions internationales nombreuses qui ont demandé à la voir. But she has not yet said yes. Elle n'a pas encore donné son accord. <laughs> One of the films which I like very much is The Bodyguard, you know, with Whitney Houston. Oui, le film, le meilleur film de, que préféré de Franck, c'est Bodyguard. Avec Whitney Houston. Avec Whitney Houston. And every time I see the film, I have to think of Marie Dolores. Et chaque fois que je vois le film, je pense à Marie Dolores. Because she is not protected, but she is the bodyguard. <laughs> Elle a le rôle de bodyguard, au lieu d'être protégée. Et beaucoup d'autres fonctions dans la police ici à Bruxelles. Marie Dolores. Marie, s'il vous plaît. Here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I would like to begin my speech by expressing my gratitude to all of you who are here to celebrate the commitment and the leadership of women. This gratitude obviously also goes to the organizing team. I would like to thank you for all the work that you did uh, to allow us to be here together tonight. Indeed, it is historically recognized that the 8th of March is the International Celebration of Women's Rights. But the distinction lies in the theme, which is not just a harmony of words. It is the annual energy that is being implemented to make the struggle special. This year, the theme is rooted in the contextualization of the struggle for equality in an immersion of humanitarian salvation. I quote, equality today for a sustainable future. The climate, the environment, and sustainability are the challenges of our time and they deserve an equally feminine and masculine perspective in the decision-making process at all levels. Ladies and gentlemen, the essence of feminist struggles aims at obtaining recognition of basic rights such as the right to have control over one's body, the right to vote or even the right to work, which would pave the way for women's independence and emancipation. Even today, and despite the progress made, we must remain vigilant in order to consolidate this quest for gender equality and 
greater justice. For that and at the risk of undermining the feminist cause, we must ensure that we do not lose the virtuous course of this struggle. What can I say about the world of policing in which I find myself, which can be as harsh as it is cruel to those who serve it? Because despite the constant evolution of mentalities, making a place for oneself as a woman, especially one of African origins, is something of a priesthood. There are therefore many reasons not to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, the main question is the following one. What is the real value of this prize? And also, for whom is it really intended? For my part, I dedicate this prize to the women of the Democratic Republic of Congo and to those men who work either in the spotlights or in the shadows for the feminist struggle in this country where wars and all forms of criminological barbarities are the daily life of the nationals, especially in the east of the country where evil is deeply rooted. Indeed, the world is currently in a context of globalization. The DRC must be able to respond rapidly to the many security issues like terrorism, sexual violence, prostitution and human trafficking. So new criminal policies adapted to the context of this young nation have to be implemented. The actors will have to put in place all the processes by which a social body organizes responses to crime in general, and particularly that which focuses on women. I also dedicate this prize to the president of the Republic, Félix Antoine Chiquestedi Chilombo, who on the 25th of November organized the inaugural high-level conference for men on the elimination of violence against women and girls in Africa, with many African heads of states as chairman of the African Union at the time. What can we say about Dr. Denis Mukwege, whose absence from this speech would, be, would constitute an absence of this contribution in the physical and mental reconstruction of Congolese women, pillars of feminism in Congo? In the spirit of Gremer's uh, actential scheme, this constitutes a poignant demonstration of the adjuvant. A special dedication of this prize is made to the person who received it just before me in 2021. I name Irene Kamanzi, a feminist, a fighter, marking to this day the seal of her life of actions in support to Congolese women. Thank you so much, Irene. A major attention as a dedication to my daughter. She has always whispered in my ear, Mom, I want to be like you. What better sentence for a mother than this one that informs us of the positive impact generated in a generational transition dimension. A daily struggle despite all the responsibilities that produce hope and identification. It is not easy in a globalized world to evolve as a woman alone. Let's evolve together because the complementarity between men and women and the partnership that results from it will build the sustainable world of tomorrow. In the same vein, feminism should never fall into the ideologically deadly trap of falling into a fratricidal war, pitting men and women against each other instead of uniting them. God bless the Democratic Republic of Congo. God bless Belgium. Thank you.
We are living in a world of photos. <laughs> On vit dans une monde des photos. Oh, j'ai oublié de traduire. <laughs> On vit dans un monde de photos. And therefore, I propose the following: that you two stand in front of the flags. The photographers. Photographe va prendre une photo à côté des drapeaux. No, wait. <laughs> And. <laughs> Freddy. The, the flag of Hessen has to be more visible. The drapeau de l'état de Hesse sera plus visible. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow, merci. Merci. Now, Maintenant, we are staying in Africa. on reste toujours en Afrique. I have to start with an apology. Je dois commencer par des excuses. The biographical note, who is our next laureate, got lost. Ah, la note biographique euh, de la lauréate suivante est perdue. In my computer <laughs> lost today. Il y a eu une petite, un bug dans l'ordinateur, donc on a perdu les textes no, d'introduction. La faute de Franck. And therefore, I was so happy when I read her speech before. Alors j'étais super content de voir le discours qu'elle va présenter. Because in his, in her discours, a lot of a biographical note was. Already in it. Dans les discours qu'elle va présenter, la plupart des notes de biographiques sont dedans. Wow. Ça nous sauve. Et donc, je vous demande maintenant applause pour Monique Ouassa Quaro de Bénin. S'il vous plaît, madame. Félicitations. <rires> yes. Madame, la... Madame, Vice President of the European Parliament. Mr. President of the European International Women's Leadership Award 2022. Honorable guests, Dear participants, journalists, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me above all to thank the audience who came today to honor and recognize female leadership. Monique Kwasakaro is from Benin. She is a sociologist and she's also a dean of a faculty that has more than 16,000 students and where there are more than 80,000 students. This university has 13 teachers that are women against 96% of men. So you see here that there is a large gap in Benin in the education system and especially in universities. So thanks to leadership and the leadership of Monique Wasaguaro, she managed to get her colleagues trust. They approved her at different positions, which wasn't easy because for us, women leadership means negotiating your position among men. 
is not something easy to do in a male dominated area. It's not as easy to become elected. During her career, she has organized an international seminar in 2019 on women leadership and also in promoting the sustainable development goals in Africa that was very successful. More than 400 participants came to the seminar supported by financial and technical partners like the European representation in Benin, the United Nations programs for development the cooperation agency in Germany, the Francophonie organization, and of course, the Education Ministry for Research and Science. Furthermore, Monique is also committed in a fair so to a fair society, and in that dynamic, she first created a lab specialized in sustainable development and inclusive development. She also carries out awareness raising action in public and in secondary and university establishments to raise awareness and managerial skills of young people, especially girls, and to encourage them to continue and succeed in their stories. I would also like to thank the Vice President of the European Parliament, all the prize winners, Mr. Radwan, the initiator of this project, and all the others, and the former award winners. I would like to dedicate this prize to the Minister who's always supported me since she was working at university in Abu Mekalavi, to all women, to all women scientists in Abu Mekalavi, with whom we have created a forum at U the University of Abu Mekalavi. And inside this forum, we defend the values of equality and complementarity between men and women. Thank you very much. Kenan. Kenan. Who's Kenan? Kenan. No, just wait, wait. Yes, if it's if it's okay, no, okay, okay, Sarah. And you know what you have to do when you go to Bina? Et vous savez ce qu'il faut faire quand vous allez au Bénin. <laughs> and you are meeting someone who has studied at the university. Et si vous avez besoin de rencontrer quelqu'un qui a fait l'université là-bas. You have only to say, you have met Monique Wassa Quaro in Brussels. Et il suffit de nommer Madame et vous saurez euh, les portes vous seront ouvertes. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Congratulations. Toutes nos félicitations. Now we are going to the South Pacific. Maintenant, nous passons dans le Pacifique du Sud. And the person who will tell us something about the laureate is um, Joe Line. Joe Line va nous présenter la prochaine laureate. When I was involved in environmental fighting in Germany, quand I had the following experience. Quand j'étais impliqué dans un environnement de guerre, j'ai eu cette no, no, no. De faire la lutte environnementale en Allemagne. Ah, la lutte environnementale, pardon. Le leader, non, le leader de tous les environnementalistes en Allemagne était Joe. Le leader de tout l'environnement euh, environnementaliste. environnementaliste allemand s'appelait Joe. 
We were around a nuclear power plant. On était euh, sur le site de nucléaire. And the police was blocking the access. Et la police bloquait l'accès. Joe went onto a container. Joe est entré dans le conteneur. Oh no, the container. En de, en haut, il est monté en haut du conteneur. Et il a <laughs> dit aux médias du monde la chose suivante. Non, il a dit aux médias du monde la chose suivante. Et il a déclaré ceci aux médias du monde. Let's no, let us go through. Laissez, otherwise, laissez-nous rentrer sinon. On va Germ, on va. It's impossible to govern to continue to govern Germany. Sinon, on bloque le gouvernement de de la de toute l'Allemagne. <laughs> C'était assez osé. Consequence. La conséquence. Uh, there was a legal case against him, high treason. Ah, il a, il a été traduit en justice. Pour autre trahison. Pour autre trahison. And then a lawyer from Germany said, "Oh, Joe shouldn't go in prison." Et un avocat euh, allemand a dit, "Oh, Joe va aller en prison." Non, va pas, doit va pas, 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 doit pas aller en prison. And this was Gerhard Schröder, who later became chancellor. Le nom est un peu compliqué à prononcer, mais vous avez non. compris. Non, Gerhard Schröder, <laughs> qui a après Gerhard, devient, Gerhard, euh, Gerhard Schröder, chancelier qui, en Allemagne. Gerhard Schröder, qui deviendra chancelier allemand. Et lui l'a sauté, Joe Leinen, sauvé. Il a, he saved Joe il a sauvé Joe Leinen. <laughs> Then Joe Leinen became the president of the European movement. Et Joe Leinen est devenu le président du euh, mouvement européen. And the, of the federalists, the European federalists. Et le mouvement européen fédéraliste. And then he had to become member of the European Parliament. Et il est devenu membre du Parlement européen. But not a normal one. Mais pas un, un ordinaire. Le président de la commission, le président de la commission. Il était le président du euh, comité environnemental. Et le président de la délégation pour la Chine. Et le président de la délégation de la Chine. Et le président de la Chine délégation. Et donc, Joe Leinen va maintenant introduire le prochain lawyer, qui est Rita Ricketts. Merci, Joe, Joe Leinen va déposer. Frank is always able to put you into surprise. I don't know what led him to <laughs> make that long introduction of some parts of my life, but uh, we know each other since many, many years, and um, he is always able to organize fascinating events. And I must say, I'm totally fascinated by what happens uh, tonight. Uh, it is extraordinary to see the biographies of uh, the women that gets the laureate. And I have the pleasure to present you another extraordinary woman who has done so much uh, in her life. And since Franz, uh, Frank gave me that uh, piece of paper with small letters, I have to read it out in this uh, way. So it's the biography of uh, Rita Ricketts. Born in London, Rita longed to be a musician. But with sick parents, there was not enough money for lessons. She contented herself with choral singing, a practice that has been put to various uses. CND, this is the nuclear uh, disarmament campaign uh, peace marches in the UK. Maybe we have seen each other because I was part of two or three of them. Campaigning for nuclear-free New Zealand raising money for charities and entertaining preschool children. Pour elle, musique et engagement politique vont du de For her, music and political involvement go together. The need to earn a living was paramount, and she only managed to put herself through university after a series of low-paid jobs. But as a single mother with two small children and no income, she had to turn down uh, an opportunity to study at Oxford and at the London School of Economics. She swapped to teacher training. Leicester and uh, Loughborough Universities She subsequently became an assistant lecturer at New Zealand's Victoria University. When six children in tow, six children in tow, the youngest ones learning Maori at the Kohanga Rio language nest, 
she was dedicated to outreach, especially opportunities for Maori, mature students and refugees. And she always and also gave lectures to senior uh, New Zealanders at the Workers' Educational Association. While lecturing at Victoria University, she established her reputation as an academic, writer and journalist. A storyteller by instinct, her research and following publications reached out to those who work, whose work was often forgotten, those in the back row. This approach has been pursued in a continuous output of articles, New Zealand, UK and US, and has resulted in two books, with a third to be published later this year. Taken her around the world to the Pacific Islands, New York, Washington, Canberra, and Asian and European capitals. She was a lead features writer for the Dominion, it's a Wellington Daily. In recognition of her New Zealand research and publications, Rita was selected for the European Community Visitors Program subsequently being awarded a European Commission scholarship to the European University in Florence in celebration of New Zealand's sesquicentennial, that means 100 years since the founding treaty of Waitangi. Aha, I learned something new. When Rita was seconded to the New Zealand Foreign Office, she found herself on the front line at the height of the anti-nuclear crisis with America, linked to the Treaty of Oraro Tonga, the South Pacific Nuclear Free Zone Treaty, which formalizes a nuclear weapon free zone in the South Pacific. And this treaty bans the use, testing, and possession of nuclear weapons within the borders of that zone. And I'm sure that uh, she has known my old friend Petra Kelly, who was especially uh, active in uh, New Zealand and uh, in Australia for Nuclear Free Pacific. She was also a member of the steering committee of the New Zealand Institute of International Affairs, believing passionately that ordinary women could make a difference if something outraged her she did something about it. She refused to let any official role get in the way of campaigning for a nuclear-free New Zealand. When she wasn't working with Prime Minister David Lang inside the formal system, she was protesting on the streets outside. L'attentat à la bombe. The bombing of Greenpeace Rainbow Warrior flagship, the result of a long-standing difference between France and New Zealand led her to interview officials and journalists in France producing newspapers and journal copies. As an English New Zealander, she divides her time between those two countries. In the UK, she thought in post-16 education and was able to continue her outreach work, particularly with the University of Oxford. She remains committed to active protest on the streets. Could see that she is protesting in favor of Ukraine these days, and to her writing on political and environmental issues. As affirmative action, she continues to collect stories from the inner city to the farm gate, showing how global politics affects the individual on the local level. So my sincere congratulations to Rita for all she has done in her life, and she deserves this uh, award today. Thank you very much. Stop. 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 Stop.
Okay, you've heard it already actually. Um, as a teacher, writer, mother, grandmother, washer upper, lavatory cleaner, you know. Um, what I'm interested in is invisibility. There's a lot of it. To affirm people's individuality, do I do this? Do I go there? Yeah, okay. To affirm people's individuality, to reveal thy diversity, old, young, differing ethnicities, sexual orientation, and different cognitive and physical makeup. Giving a paper at Harvard University, Kennedy School, and as a mere stand-in, because they couldn't get any better, um, I told a true story about de Gaulle, de Gaulle, you know, you've heard of him, um, severely disabled daughter. Her story received a stunning ovation. Hey tangata, hey tangata, hey tangata. It is the people, the people, the people. It is the people who make up our stories. It is their stories that make our history. But the lives of ordinary people, what D.H., what W.H. Auden called the unknown, they were often discounted. Academic fashions have changed, and historians now look at people's stories, their diaries, their memoirs, their letters, they uncover their stories because ordinary people are extraordinary. They remind us that where would we be without them? But they're still excluded from policy and decision making. If they don't toe the line, they can lose their jobs, their freedom, as seen on the streets of Russia today. Aotearoa, New Zealand's first Māori woman trainee diplomat, a double handicap woman and Māori in those days, she lost her job because she thought differently. She took as her Bible, Fanon, Franz Fanon's The Wretched of the Earth, and she made public her disdain for a foreign policy designed to please colonial masters, the US replacing Britain. Atareta died two years ago. <clears throat> she was just one example. There are others, a man this time, Paddy Costello, labeled a spy because his language skills allowed him to discover that Russia had an A-bomb in the 1940s. Or was it because he was an Irish immigrant and his face didn't fit? <clears throat> My recent, <clears throat> I'm just gonna go to water, sorry. My recent work on diversity and inclusion suggests that times have changed but there's still more to do. Getting the grandi pezzi, the big people, to listen is a wero, a challenge. 
Organising a Pacific Security Conference, I persuade a sympathetic woman government minister to let a mere puppeteer, Rose Beecham, perform during the pre-dinner drinks. A puppet show, protested weary grandees, but with cocktail in hand, they acquiesced. Rose was a consummate performer, and as her protagonist, Josie Bucket, poured water on a world ablaze, recalcitrant members of the audience were moved to tears. It was a wake-up call to take environmental security seriously. Rose and I were also activists in the wider community. I started life in, with my grandfather, who was a trades union leader and a Labour Party apparatique. Co he collected, got me to go and pick up the voting slips on my bicycle. As a teenager, I walked hundreds of miles to Bam Pallavis. We march to Bam Pallavis. We march to Bam Pallavis. Now we want to shout Trident, but no one's listening. Being heard was easier in Aotearoa, and Rose and I were insatiable activists. Over Christmas and New Year, 1981, ancient history for most of you, we were part of a crowd who risked life and limb in Wellington outside the sports ground during the Springboks tour, the rugby tour. With the visit of the USS Texas, 1983, we were out on the streets again. We chorus loudly, the yellow rose of Texas, she has a nasty smell. It's something like uranium, but they hide it pretty well. There's leaking shit in the ocean, and so on. On the way to Wellington Civic Square, where we would sing with a duo called the Top Twins, a Quaker lady stopped us saying, could you dears not use that word? We obeyed. Our protests and songs grew increasingly strident over the next few years, and the message had an enthusiastic reception from the Labour Prime Minister, David Longy, but it drew threats from the American government. Inside the foreign ministry where I'd been seconded, we sat around a whiteboard listening positive things about the US-New Zealand relationship to try to find a way forward. Outside, I wrote articles and protested on the steps of parliament as the anti-nuclear legislation was de being debated inside. We marched up and down singing, you haven't, a, you haven't an arm, you haven't a leg, you're an eyeless, boneless, chickenless egg. You better be put with your bone to beg. I'll never take our sons again, and I wish they'd listen to that in the Ukraine. We marched up and down, and David Longy sent a messenger out to say, could you sing a bit softer? Because we can't hear inside the chamber. The anti-nuclear legislation passed in 1987, and the US was downgraded from ally to friend. David Longer's response was robust. To compel an ally to accept nuclear weapons against the wishes of that ally is to take the moral position of totalitarianism, which allows for no self-determination. Even the opposition party signed up to anti-nuclearism, although behind the scenes, they're trying their hardest to get back in. David Long is not alive to see, th not alive to see this, but it can be imagined that in Elysium's fields, he will be repeating the warning of a macho force lurching into mutual madness. David Longy died in 2005. His story, his courage deserves to be remembered. All the women of the New Zealand peace organizations from the time are proud to have been associated with him and, what is more, to have been listened to. Observers thought it was easy for New Zealand to take this high moral ground. Two years before, it wasn't true. 
On the 10th of July, 1985, French secret agents bombed the, Rain the, P the Greenpeace flagship, the Rainbow Warrior, in Auckland Harbour, an act of state-sponsored terrorism. As a recipient of an EU scholarship honoring New Zealand's 1990 celebrations, I was able to interview politicians in Europe and take them to task. I upbraided Michel Rocard, by 1988 Prime Minister of France, who was on his way to New Zealand to apologize. I thought he looked like Edith Piaf in drag, actually, but don't quote me. Later on, I was invited into the, into the replacement Rainbow Warrior off the shore of Morea. I was able to tell them the story of New Zealand's successful bid to get rep reparations to Gorbachev's environment minister who in turn showed my children a film about the destruction of the coral. My youngest son, Tommy, not quite three at the time, must have taken it all to heart because he has his own company now advising on how to become carbon neutral. This is what mothers are for. This is what we try to do, to pass the baton. Kia ora. When Kuwait was invaded in 1990, there was talk of New Zealand troops joining America and Britain. Instead, we suggested, could Aotearoa send milk powder? Supplying food was exempted from sanctions. We wrote to the, Prime, to the Trade Minister, Mike Moore, and duly, three Hercules jets were detailed to make a delivery. Wake up, EU. New Zealand farmers are wanting, UK farmers are wanting to send humanitarian aid to border countries to help feed Ukrainian refugees, but they're blocked by new red tape. Forget your justified chagrin about Brexit. Fix this, please. Never let it be said that women are powerless. More recently, we faced down very stiff police opposition when we protested outside arms sales conference. This award is for Rose. Rose died a few weeks ago, a shocking loss. In her name, I ask the people of the Ukraine and Russia to work to prevent their people becoming pawns as the big powers make imperialistic claims and counterclaims. Slava, Ura Slava Ukraini, will their voices be heard? Mana kite iwi, mana kite iwi, mate wa. Now I want you to all stand up and sing this with me. I'm not an idiot all on my own. Come on, up again. <laughs> to visit the Prime Minister's office. Quand j'étais la première fois en Nouvelle-Zélande, elle m'a proposé de voir le Premier Ministre. And she, I said, I'm not interested. But please come, you will have a chance to do the following. J'ai dit que je n'étais pas intéressé, mais elle a insisté pour les raisons suivantes. Frank, you can put stickers from Germany, from environment, on the toilet of the Prime Minister. Tu peux aller coller une étiquette dans les toilettes du bureau du Premier Ministre. Sur l'environnement en Allemagne. Sur l'environnement en Allemagne. And I said, okay, I'll see the Prime Minister and his toilet. Et donc, euh, j'ai accepté de voir le Premier Ministre et les toilettes de son bureau. 
and I, I did it thanks to her advice. Et je la remercie encore une fois pour ça. <laughs> Now, <laughs> we will take apologies a little bit more time, some 10 minutes, because we are now going on va passer à en Afrique. En Afrique, on revient en Afrique. And Fanny Le Gros will tell us who is the next at the Avon. Fanny Le Gros va nous présenter la prochaine dans les réates. Fanny Le Gros, she is a very famous Belgian lawyer. C'est une uh, avocate très célèbre en Belgique. She's concentrating on three different fields. Elle est uh, concentrée sur trois différents secteurs. When an individual has problems with the state. Les, quand les personnes physiques ont un problème avec l'État. Second, on women who don't have money, but they need a good lawyer. En deuxième lieu, les femmes qui n'ont pas les moyens mais qui ont besoin d'avocats. And all family law. Et le, le droit de la famille. Divorce, enfant, and all of this. Divorce, garde d'enfants et tout ce qui tourne autour de la famille. And therefore, Fanny, please tell us who will be the next lawyer. S'il vous plaît. Chers vous tous, bonsoir. Good evening. I would like uh, to say that I was, uh, if I was a lawyer I and I would be I, in a court, I would be able to speak freely. But this is not the case here, because I have to introduce an exceptional woman, but is exceptionally uh, humble. And she didn't want me to plead for her or to represent her, but just to tell about her through her biography. And I would have enjoyed to say more about her because I really love her uh, and I admire her so much. But I have to keep to my role. And just saying who she is uh, is something exceptional indeed. I met her as a lawyer in Brussels uh, in her family, uh, in, in my family, we, we, we are uh, lawyers uh, in the family. My father who created Lawyers Without Borders. And one day he present, introduced uh, Jamila Zetki uh, to me about 15 years ago. And since then, we, uh, we, we uh, meet uh, quite regularly. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, telling you that she's um, the Attorney General at the Court of Cassation in the Kingdom of Morocco. She's a judge at the Administrative Tribunal of the African Union representing the Kingdom of Morocco at Addis Abeba. She's a president of the Dialogue for Forum of African Judges, member of the Assanian Association uh, of Judges Morocco, and she's honored by the just, uh, with the Justice, Law and Magistracy Trophy, formerly Asian Magistrate with the Belgian Judicial Authorities, and a former legal advisor to the uh, mission of the Kingdom of Morocco to the Union, European Union. Jamila was born in Rabat. She had time to marry, to have four children. She has a legal background, started with a uh, law capacity in 1987, followed by a law degree from Mohamed V in Rabat in private law. She then had a uh, end of studies uh, uh, diploma um, from the National Institute of Legal and Judicial Studies in Rabat. Uh, she had uh, training in USA on children's rights. She was uh, trained in Nevada at the International um, uh, Magistracy uh, Institute in Paris. She followed two other training courses, respectively, at the judiciary within the service of the federal police of the city and within the Belgian Federal Prosecutor's Office at a European level. She was trained within the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg, and she supplemented this training by a professional master in uh, national and international arbitration and mediation in 2018. So this uh, professional career is quite exceptional. Uh, she became uh, first deputy public prosecutor at the um, uh, court in Rabat. She's um, also uh, 
president vice president uh, in of, of this chamber. In 2004, she became advisor to the general secretary within the Ministry of Justice, then advisor in charge of legal studies in this ministry. She became president of the chamber at the Court of Appeal uh, of Rabat and uh, general prosecutor, general attorney uh, uh, at the court of uh, at the highest uh, jurisdiction um, in Morocco. Uh, from 2008 to 2016, she became liaison uh, judge with the Belgian uh, judicial authorities. Uh, she exchanges her experience and expertise uh, in a technical and legal uh, field. Um, from 2016 till 2021, she becomes a judge and legal advisor of the uh, Kingdom of Morocco's mission to the European Union, and she becomes an expert to uh, the four parties uh, organization fighting terrorism since 2010. Jamila, at the same time, was always very active in the uh, uh, civil uh, society uh, at a European and uh, uh, Moroccan level as regards uh, the fight for the rights of uh, women and children. She's a member of the Observatory of the Rights of the Child, as well as the National Union of Morocco Women, as well as a member of the European Mediterranean Dialogue, which works between uh, a coming together, which is uh, more important than ever between these two shores. Thank you, uh, Jamila, to be this woman and uh, to uh, be uh, um, so active uh, to protect the rights of women. Uh, thank you, Fanny. Ladies and gentlemen, before delivering my speech, I would like to thank Fanny and her dad. He's almost my dad since I came to Belgium. I'll explain to this, uh, this later on. It's the uh, Batonnier Le Gros. Uh, Mrs. Vice President of the European uh, Parliament, Mr. Pre uh, Secretary of State Becker, who left us just before, Mr. Director Becker, ladies and uh, gentlemen, in your capacities. Since the 1990s, the Kingdom of Morocco, uh, like uh, worldwide, uh, experienced a clear improvement of the situation of women. And the kingdom has made um, clear improvements for women when it comes to promoting women's rights, both in terms of reforming the legal system at a national level, um, abiding to international conventions, as at the level of strengthening of the institutional framework and the development of public policies relating to gender equality and the promotion and protection of the rights of women. Ladies and gentlemen, at the level of the Kingdom of Morocco, one should know that the World Bank has ranked the Kingdom the first in the MENA region. MENA means Middle East and North Africa in terms of economic inclusion of women. I quote here, in your presence and within the framework of the promotion and integration of American women uh, that I represent here to you, uh, of important political and constitutional reforms that have been uh, implemented at a sectoral and categorial level for uh, vulnerable women uh, or women uh, in precarious situations, women in a situation of violence, discrimination against girls and women, etc., etc. It's a very long list. Also, establishing the principle of gender equality in civil rights, 
political rights, economic rights, social rights, cultural rights, and environmental rights, not to mention the establishment of the new program for the development of a model including the protection of women's rights, and more specifically, women in rural areas. Ladies and gentlemen, at the level of legislative reform, improving the status of the family, which was the last reform of the family uh, code 2004, concretize the consolidation of family relations within the couple on the basis of equity and equality and insisted on asserting the rights of Moroccan women. A reform of the family code was the result of rigorous work by the Royal Advisory Commission that was implemented by our uh, King Mohammed VI, uh, who since his internalization always put uh, women, Moroccan women, uh, uh, as a priority. And this Royal Commission made it possible to consign modernization and openness with a determination to remain faithful to our traditions and our societal values. A new code which has made it possible to guarantee reciprocal rights between spouses and equal rights and duties of men and women within a family which is now placed under the responsibility of both spouses. So since 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot approach my professional career as a female judge at a national and international level without announcing to you the representativeness of women in the field of judiciary, which amounts to 4,215 judges at a national level, including 1,048 uh, 1, female judges. That is. 24.87% of all judges in the kingdom. In the same context, uh, to promote Moroccan women and following the establishment of the Superior Council of the Judiciary, whose composition has been strengthened in 2007 by increasing the number of electorate magistrates, which amounts uh, so uh, the uh, first instance and appeals courts, uh, the number was increased to 10 female judges. I reiterate once again my thanks as a representative of American women, the emancipated woman, the responsible woman, and the mother of a family, because family didn't say so. I'm married and I'm the mother of four. Uh, my uh, grown-up children are in uh, the United States. I have one uh, kid in Belgium. And actually... Uh, now I'm in Morocco, but I arrived in Belgium 28 as a liaison judge, and I spent 15 years here in Belgium. And I would like to thank the Belgian authorities for that. My, my son is here uh, in, in his uh, traditional outfit. Unfortunately, I want to have a girl, but I had four boys, so, uh, so he's... Uh, the youngest of my four sons. So I'm, I, I'm not just a magistrate, I'm not just a judge. When the organizers sent, invited me, um, I had a look at uh, my, uh, uh, my life since I was a child uh, to what I became today. And I would like to thank everyone, all the organizers. I would like to dedicate this great present I received uh, in, 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 at the very heart of Europe to my children, to my husband, who was my main support and was not able to join us today, and also to Her Majesty the King, Mohammed VI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jamila. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci pour ce prix. Okay, okay, please, stop. Let's make... Oh, no, uh, with it, with, with it. A family photo. Okay, come on. Would you like a photo? Of course. Sans le prix.
Thank you. Thank you very merci, much. Merci, merci beaucoup. Now we are coming back to Europe. On revient en Europe. <laughs> and the introduction will be done by Sylvia Polidori. Et l'introduction sera faite par Sylvia Polidori. She is not what most people think. Elle n'est pas ce que vous croyez. <laughs> On the one hand, she is a poet. D'un côté, c'est une poète. With incredible books. Avec des livres magnifiques. And on the other hand, she's a civil servant. Et d'un autre côté, elle est elle au elle service pour les institutions elle, européennes. Voilà, institutions européennes. But here she is um, as women, as woman. Présente aujourd'hui, elle est comme une femme. Et l'ami de Svetlana. Et l'ami de Svetlana, la prochaine lauréate. And she will tell us who exactly is Svetlana. Elle va Please, nous présenter Sylvia. la prochaine. <laughs> and as you can hear when she starts to speak, she's from Italy. Et vous allez entendre dans l'accent qu'elle quand elle va présenter, elle est d'Italie. And she is from the Abruzzi. The high mountains in the middle of Italy. <laughs> Elle vient de, de montagne au milieu de l'Italie. Yes. No, no, Sylvia. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Frank, for this introduction. And the uh, honorable members of this audience, nice audience, Good evening. It is my privilege to introduce an exceptional woman and a dear friend, Svetlana Spaich. Svetlana is born in the, was born in the Yugoslav city of Sremka Mitrovica, in Roman times called Sirmium a birthplace of seven emperors, and raised in Belgrade. Passionate for gymnastics in the tradition of Nadia Comaneci and languages, she was hesitant about which path to take. When at 15, she won a gold medal in Serbia for her language performances, her future was decided, languages. Her parents supported that choice and arranged study visits in London, Paris, Dijon, and Brussels. At the University of Belgrade, she finished with two masters of English and French languages and literature. In her free time, she added Italian and started translating French poetry for the literature magazine Student, launched by a group of fellow students. At 24, she published her first translation of a book, Essays on Paul Valéry, followed by a book by Paul Valéry and became at 25 the youngest member of the Serbian Association of Literary Translators. When the Yugoslav war, war started in 1991, she received a French government scholarship at the École Supérieure d'Interprètes et de Traducteurs at the Sorbonne University, where she was among the 15% who passed the final examination. This opened the door to her international career of a conference interpreter working at the highest level for European institutions and other international organizations, including the War Crimes Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia in The Hague, where she spent 10 years as a staff member and interpreted all at all historic trials held there. In the midst of the Western Balkans crisis, she felt the need to join together with her brother, Nebojsia Spajic, 
one of the most prominent peace activists and journalists in the region at that time, the Paris-based Peace and Crisis Management Foundation to counterbalance the propaganda of national identities and fight for moderation and dialogue. She finally settled in Brussels, the capital of a translational construction aiming for people to listen, share, and learn from each other, where the word compromise is a compliment, and create a common structure contributing to peace and sustainability worldwide. In Brussels, apart from her work for EU institutions, she dedicates herself to building bridges between people through culture, organizing events such as poetry readings, concerts, exhibitions, and so on. With artists of different origins, as well as to her own writing, in early 2018, she co-founded the Peace Performance Train, a movement of international artists based mainly Bel in Belgium, who launch through their performances an artistic cry for peace, tolerance, and diversity in an increasingly divided world. While commuting regularly to Paris, the city which for her incarnates international culture, where she teaches conference interpretation at the Institut de Ménagement et de Communication Interculturelle, she has become the example of how national narrow-mindedness can be overcome by determination and cultural activities. Congratulations, Vetla. It is not uh, easy to be uh, the, the only one standing between uh, uh, this uh, ceremony and the delicious uh, dinner. So I will do my best not to be long and not to be boring. <laughs> I hope I'll manage. Grazie mille, Silvia. Silvia, <laughs> and thank you. Thank you so much, Silvia. It is such a pleasure to be announced by Silvia Polidori my very dear friend, uh, and the poetess whom I admire, and with whom I uh, work on a number of uh, common projects, uh, the latest uh, of which is our uh, translation that we did together of her uh, beautiful book of poetry on the crest of the wave. I wish to thank first and foremost the three brave men who have launched this uh, beautiful initiative of empowering women. Frank Schwalbachot, Radwan Bashiri, and uh, Bjorn Haltin. I call them brave, as they dare send the message that, like us, they are feminists as well. And I am very happy to accept their reached out hand, as I deeply believe that it is only hand in hand that we can win this war which is not a war of the sexes, but a war on patriarchate. And it is that patriarchate 
which is the source of so much injustice and in some society of cruel and unacceptable treatment of women, deprived of their rights and even in some cases of their livelihoods. It is that patriarchat that we have to fight by identifying it, not only around ourselves, but also in ourselves. Because like every struggle, this one starts inside first. I wish to thank the European institutions uh, that supported this award, and especially the Vice President of the European Parliament, uh, Mrs. Nicola Beer, who with her presence gives the lettre de noblesse to this event. Last but not least, I wish to thank our hosts, uh, the State Secretary for Foreign Affairs of Hesse, as well as the Hesse Representative Office in Brussels for hosting us so generously in their beautiful premises in the European Quarter. I'm also thankful uh, to be in the presence of all these uh, extraordinary women that are laureates of this year's award, which is for me an honor and a humbling experience. Finally, once again, I thank Frank uh, Schwalbachot for uh, the beautiful biography of me that he wrote following a two hours long interrogation. <laughs> and I choose my words carefully. And for spotting so swiftly the red thread of my life, which is creating cultural, intercultural links and bridges, opposing war, opposing nationalisms, leading to it, giving, whenever I can, my own contribution to the reminder as to all that we have in common, rather than all that divides us, often artificially. I also thank him for reminding me of my dreams as a little girl and the fact that I certainly followed them and indeed made them come true. Thank you for encouraging young girls and women to follow their dreams by awarding us for having had the courage to do so. There was, of course, luck in it as well, but luck smiles to the brave, becoming a special kind of a well-deserved luck. And thank you for presenting me as both Yugoslav and Serbian, my two motherlands that I am proud of, thus showing that although Yugoslavia no longer exists, Yugoslavs, many Yugoslavs do, which is a sort of a personal opposition to nationalisms, which caused the tragic downslide of a country that rested successfully for many decades on the same values of peace, tolerance, and openness that the EU is being built upon. A friend of mine who is a psychologist asked me the other day what this prize meant to me. I said that it was an incitement for me to be worthy of it, and that is exactly how I feel. It makes me responsible to continue to deserve it by contributing where I can to spreading love, understanding, peace and tolerance through artistic and cultural links, the two domains in which borders disappear most naturally. Several years ago, a few months after the series of terrorist attacks shattered Brussels and shocked the world, in February 2018, to be precise, I was one of the co-founders of the international artistic movement called the Peace Performance Train, which we launched in Brussels. Under the slogan, Art is our homeland, we set out to defend, spread, and celebrate the astonishing international spirit, spirit which characterizes Belgium and its capital, Brussels. And we have a perfect uh, demonstration of it uh, this evening here. We, in the peace train, are convinced that across the world, the spirit of solidarity is much more per pervasive than it seems, especially when things are brought down from the political to the human level. And art is a natural 
medium and trigger for this. Poetry and music are at the heart of our performances, and that is why I'm going to read my translation of a poem written by our member, a famous Croatian and poet of Bosnian origin, Enes Kisevic, whose friend and faithful translator I have been for years. This poem is called Women in Black, and it is dedicated to an association of determined Serbian women who oppose war and injustice, calling on the solidarity of women to eradicate them. So the poem is called Women in Black. However, today's black for me and I know for you are these colors. So I will read it now. Women in Black as colorful armies, diplomats and models walk the red carpet of the world, dressed according to the latest fashion, and the smell of blood and perfume lingers in the air. You are still wrapped in Antigone's black, in the Virgin Mary's black, Anne Frank's black, the black worn by the mothers of the camp of Jasenovac, the mothers of Bleiburg, the mothers of Srebrenica. I can see you talking to the raped women of Ternopolje, reaching out to the war orphans of Kozara, bowing your heads before the de detainees of Omarska. Alas, the black you are wearing is getting more black by the day. Whereas I so long to see you wearing festive clothes in my lifetime. Today, however, might and arrogance shine brightly, while truth is wrapped in black. But soon, young people will be talking about the time when your blackness on this black land was more beautiful than flowers. Thank you. Today, these colors are a substitute for black, and today's flowers are black. Thank you for your attention. Peace to the world, and peace to Ukraine. Thank you, thank Family you, photo. Svetlana. <laughs> and this is my son. <laughs> 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 and when he arrived, she said, it's the first time in my life that I see you with a jacket. <laughs> so this is for grandmother, <laughs> for grandparents. Et quand elle est arrivée aujourd'hui, elle a dit, mais c'est la première fois que je te vois avec un, une veste. <laughs> Dans un costume, oui. <laughs> and now, Nicolas Bair! So thank you very much. Uh, but the applause is an applause for you. I mean, you are the heart of these incredible ceremony today, those impressive women. Uh, we had the honor to meet today, hear about your careers, about your dreams you were fighting for. And so I thank uh, Mrs. Kasmani, Frank Oberschwald, um, Mr. Hudlin, and uh, Mr. Bashiri um, to organizing these events for the, first, for the fourth time. And I think it's really an important idea uh, to emphasize on such really impressive uh, women um, which decided to pursue your dre their dreams. Um, something which is often very difficult, as we heard, but they were struggling through and they were also challenging in male-dominated fields and fight their way for their goals. Um, I'm really impressed, and I think everybody in the room is really impressed by your 
um, role model. And I think it's really important to have such brave women, um, such role models who are facing different obstacles in their life but never gave up. They had that determination and they came to their goal. And those representations, in my opinion, matters. All you, seven of you, are a great example. Uh, not only for women of your age, but especially, I think, for the younger generations. Um, that you never have to give up, that you have to trust in your dreams. And as my parents would add it in that, it might be that you may have to make an effort, but you can reach your dreams and your goals. And you all today proved with your careers that you made an effort and that you reach these goals. And I think that all those role models change over time what we are reaching, uh, especially for women and young girls. How, and we see, however, that already today, things are changing. So for example, here in Brussels, we see that with all the La Fanda line, we have a female president of the commission with Roberta Metzola, who just was elected, we have, after 20 years, a female president of European Parliament. And with Christine Lagarde, there is the first ever woman president of the Central Bank of Europe. I think these are encouraging signs. But in my opinion, your role models is even much more important because sometimes young girls think those functions are very far away. But uh, if we have role models from the quite normal life, but which show that they can reach all what they want, I think this is even more impressing and maybe also more giving the trust in those girls themselves um, to get forward with their dreams. And we saw the different fields where you were engaged in, whether it is culture, whether it is exchange, whether it is education. As an activist, as somebody who is working at university, a prosecutor, a lawyer, a model, everything matters in, in such field. And so I think even when I follow today, as diverse your engagement is, you have a common line in that. And that is not only struggling for a woman's right to fulfill their goals and dreams, but I had really hard the impression that the thing which is the same in your life is that you love people and you are serving people with your engagement. And this, I think, is something we really have to say thank you for that. Um, it's something which really deserves such an award. And it is something which really deserves that there are so many people, female or male, just to copy it. I think this will make further progress in our societies. And I really hope that we will have the right and the possibility to have more of those leadership awards, but maybe someday it will not be necessary to point out only the women. Yes, we have some steps back also. So in Germany, I have to admit that we have now a male chancellor um, after 16 years of Angela Merkel. And you are laughing now, but my youngest son, uh, some years ago, just was asking me, say, say is, is it possible that also a man can become chancellor in Germany? Okay, we proved it. it's possible. Maybe this is also a gender question. Maybe in some years we will discuss gender equality from the other side. Um, my husband and me, we have five uh, sons and only one girl. I always tell the sons, it will be difficult for you in the years to come. And your mother is working for that. It will be difficult because we are working for the equality of women. And so, thank you very much. I think that uh, leadership doesn't have a gender, 
But I think it's important that we have this notion of leadership, which is always together, not only for engagement in your own careers, but also for the engagement of the society. So I hope we will not only celebrate you, but we can celebrate a lot more of women. And thank you once again for organizing this prize. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.